Welcome to War Games on Toast, all of you lovely people. I am once again back, but today I am not talking about Warcry. Today is an extra special episode of Extra Special Proportions. As some of you may have noticed, I hit 1,000 subscribers, almost 200 subscribers ago, and this is going to be a big old blowout 1,000 subscriber special. As always, please remember to support your local toast by liking, commenting, and subscribing, as this helps me defeat that dastardly YouTube algorithmic demon. But with all that out of the way, let's get on with the celebrations. Groovy. First things first, I promised a number of months ago to reveal the mysterious yellow blur behind me. This is no longer blurred, as you can see. This is in full display. And I also promised that I would reward the first person to guess what they were correctly. To my surprise, I got all kinds of wacky answers, and Minions was the most common, as if your boy Toast was some sort of wacky degenerate. Of course! In the end, though, Florian Hubner came forward with an answer that was so close to being correct, I have deemed it as correct. Why should I? But then, as if out of nowhere, a second person came in the name of Aiden Halftroll, who guessed an even better answer, and that left me in a bit of a pickle. Now, I couldn't decide in the end who to gift the reward of a cookie to, uh, the cookie being code word for an actual real reward, of course, and in the end, I decided to gift them both. And the reward for guessing correctly is a bespoke warband of your choice. So Florian, in congratulations, you have won the Guess the Yellow Blur contest, competition. Reach out to me and I will get those sent to you as soon as possible. If you don't reach out, I will try and reach out to you myself and we will get this all sorted out. And now for something completely different. But let's talk about the actual reveal here and let's see what they actually are because you can see roughly what they are from the distance. And if you give me two seconds, I will grab one of them. So these wonderful ducks are actually all Lord of the Rings inspired characters. This one here is, of course, Aragorn. I have a Gimli, a Legolas, a Frodo, a Sam, an Arwen, and of course, a Gimli. I already said that. A Gollum. <laughs> Gollum being my most recent one. Uh, and yeah, they are awesome. Uh, I really enjoy them. So I've been getting these um, multiple times a year as presents for various events of my wife, and they are amazing, and they make up the backdrop of every video I've done for quite some time now, and that's pretty cool. But, you see, this is kind of cool as well. My wife, being the wonderful woman she is, actually got me a 1,000 subscriber special present and I did originally record an unboxing of this. Unfortunately that footage was corrupted and therefore it no longer exists. Now providing my editing skills are up to the task, I have done a recreation, a dramatic recreation of the unboxing itself. It's a Balrog. That's right. In my hands right here. Is it, is it on screen? It is. I have the Balrog of Morgoth, who is the size of my rather substantial head. This thing is ginormous, and I absolutely love him. It is a shame the original footage uh, got lost, because uh, I was beyond surprised to see this absolute chad appear on my desk. Um, but yeah, this, this guy, he's, he's getting a special place on the old, on the old toast rack. He, he goes up there. Now, it looks like he can't be seen because my head's in the way. That will change because we have something special planned later on with that big old box it's currently resting on. Groovy. But before we get into all that, uh, this is the sort of the weird part of the video that's kind of strange. I don't know how I do it, but I'm just going to go in there and just dip my toes in. And by dip, I mean jump in arse first. So the weird thing about hitting 1,000 subscribers is that you can monetize your content and become a YouTube partner. I never actually expected my channel to hit 1,000 subscribers. Um, 
I didn't really expect to reach out to anyone beyond maybe my son and possibly one of his friends. And that's really it. So it's sitting here at over 1,000, almost 1,200 as of recording. It's really freaking awesome. And what's even better is being able to reach out and just talk to the community and connect with people um, both online and hopefully in person at various events. Or if anyone watches this, is in the northeast of England, possibly regularly at various gaming clubs. Who knows? It'd be pretty cool to find people. But one thing that's difficult with content creation is keeping things chugging along, improving audio and video quality, and making new content, new and interesting content, and even just buying new warbands to review and do videos on. Um, it's kind of hard to do. And from where I started to where I am now, the audio and visual quality of my videos, I like to think of skyrocketed in quality, um, but it can always be better. Uh, now, I work a full time job, um, but I also have a family to support and investing more money into the channel when it isn't giving anything back is very difficult to do, especially in these times. The economy in, in England is kind of shite and frankly everywhere you know it's, it's kind of it's kind of pants everything's more expensive and it's get harder and harder to do it's harder to invest into the channel um although i still do this pop filter being a, a big example not much of an expense but someone requested i get a pop filter and then boom the very next video a pop filter appeared and what i'd like to do is to be able to expand with better lighting have maybe a better camera, a better microphone, a better a software to edit my videos on potentially. Uh, so what does this mean for the future of the channel? Well, for everyone watching and enjoying my content, nothing is changing. I am still going to try and get two videos out every week. So that's a Monday, a Tuesday and a Friday. And this content will always be free. What I have opened up, however, is a YouTube members account and also a Patreon account. I am not pressuring anyone to pledge or sign up. Uh, this is purely for a way for people to show support in a different way uh, and help the channel grow and improve uh, in a more tangible sense. All of my usual content is staying free and for the most part, all of my content will stay free. I've spent a while uh, thinking about what to offer members. And in the end, I came up with three uh, tiers all hitting the cheapest brackets that YouTube offer. I would also love to hear anything that you would like to see with the membership rewards and membership incentives. So I can add to that and then make it more, uh, more appealing for you and to tailor to the audience and that kind of thing. And so there are three, three tiers. And these are the Toast Eaters, the Absolute Legends, and the Algorithmic Demon Slayers. So going over this, the three tiers here, the Toast Eaters, get uh, badges. Uh, I don't currently know how to make custom badges. I think you can. Uh, I'm kind of old. I, I don't understand any of this yet. Um, but I will get some cool toasters to make us custom badges if that's the thing I can do. It sounds cool. I would like to do that. So we'll get some cool badges for everybody. Um, member shout outs as well is another big one. So on joining, um, you get a verbal shout out on joining and a permanent place in the credits at the end of every video. Uh, going from now until the the end of time and access to polls to dictate the future of the channel and what content I produce. These will be as often as I can to make sure that you get a say in what is done in the future, which is really cool. And of course, you also get my undying gratitude, and that is 99 pence or your local regional equivalent, which I think is still just going to be 99 of your small currency. Uh, and that is per month. And that is what you get. Now, with the absolute legends tier, you get all of the above. In addition, uh, you get a monthly update vlog uh, where I go over what projects I'm working on, what hobby stuff I'm doing, uh, behind the scenes stuff, like ask me anything content, um, general cool things like that. So it's all, all the behind the scenes nonsense that goes on at Toast HQ. Uh, you'd also get a more prominent place in the credits. So you'll still get your, your verbal shout out, but you'll get a you'll be under the um, the absolute legend here on the credits themselves, which is pretty cool. And that comes in at £1.99 or your, again, your regional equivalent of that, which I assume is just 
99 cents. I, I don't actually know. Um, but that's what that is. Now, finally, there's the algorithmic demon slayers. Uh, this tier is more for people who just want to really show their support. Um, you do get more, but uh, the, the biggest thing here is that you get a verbal shout out in every single video. In addition to getting the top billing on the credits, so you'll have the algorithmic demon slayer tag on your uh, on the credits, and that'll be the, the first and most prominent little pop up there. And that is £2.99 for that tier. And that is both on YouTube members and also on Patreon. And finally, there's also going to be giveaways that are going to be tied to all this as well. So we've done a giveaway today and that was pretty cool. But there'll be there'll be more uh, based on initially on uh, milestones hit. So every ten uh, members there'll be a giveaway, and then eventually after about ten, there'll be every month ideally there'll be a giveaway where you you never get put in the hat, and that'll usually be the the book warband or potentially in the future a big box. So like the hunter and hunted box set get that sent out as well, and that's just one way of giving back to the community and showing my appreciation to those who are um, generously uh, supporting and funding the continued existence of War Games on Toast. And that's it for the money begging part of this video. Um, thank you to everyone and anyone who does join up. But if you can't or don't want to, don't worry. Uh, you can help support the channel just by doing what you're doing. And that's just watching my content. And it all means the world. Well, here we are. It's time to open the toast vault. Uh, the celebrations do not end here. And not too long ago, I found something that was once thought to be long lost. A relic from the old days of Warhammer fantasy. And a pretty darn cool piece of kit in its own right. I posted a sneak peek a few months back. And now is absolutely the time to crack it open. So this thing here is... Apparently it's smidge dusty. Ugh. Anyone know what this is? I hope so, because this was an awesome game. This is the collector's edition box for Warhammer Online. And this thing was awesome. Uh, so Warhammer Online was one of my most played games as a kid. It was very, very good. Uh, functionally a bit of a, a war, World of Warcraft clone. Um, but I thought I did a lot of things better than a lot of things that I did actually eventually made it to World of Warcraft. And we're going to crack this open now. This is a big box. Um, so we'll get off this wonderful, this wonderful thick sleeve. We've got this little, little protector here. Now, this thing here is wonderful because it has all kinds of good gubbins in. So first things first, we have this massive hardback book uh, in pristine condition. This, this whole box is pristine. Um, the toast vault is not very well maintained and the fact this thing is in pristine condition is pretty damn cool. So this big old book here, uh, I'm going to try and make sure I don't... Let's try and show it here. This is a gorgeous art book. Try and get this on camera here. Absolutely beautiful art book here, right? It's, it's just... How many pages? That's a lot of pages. That's like maybe 100, 200-ish pages of beautiful, beautiful artwork. That was done for Warhammer Online. And this is just genuinely like just some beautiful classic fantasy artwork. It has this little descriptions for each faction in um in that game. And there were a lot of factions that covered all the big ones in fantasy. And this is a beautiful book. Uh this has been opened maybe twice. Um, so once when I first got it, and now. And yeah, it is absolutely gorgeous, but that's not all. So you also get a not quite as thick second book, this time in blue. A second, again, hardback. Hardback. Beautiful hardback tome here. And this is actually a prelude. It's called Warmer Online, the prelude to war. And it is a, it looks to be multiple comic books. Uh, all stories have been written by Graham McNeil. So he's a, a, a very popular writer for um, Games Workshop. It is a graphic novel um, with multiple stories and multiple art styles. Um, and it is really cool. Again, this has been opened now exactly twice. So once when I got it, when I read it, I read it all the way through in one go. And then now. 
and it is again pristine it is beautiful and yeah, if you can find this set this box uh i don't know how much it is but if you can ever find it on the cheap somewhere these two books alone are gorgeous these are wonderful to have as a little collection piece um and they are lovely definitely recommend if you can find them give them a look they're really nice but that's not all there's even more things this is a really cool set so you get a never before used really cool a uh, mouse pad how cool is that it's never been used but it exists and it's a cool mouse pad and it's got like all the main factions so you've got the high elves the dark elves um humans and chaos and then dwarfs and orcs so you know, there's six factions in the game and that's really cool i think skaven came at one point as well uh that that could be me just making things up i don't actually know uh then you get the wonderful box this actually contains warhammer online it came in two discs and it had a this is a relic from the past as well an actual instruction manual remember back in the day yeah man it's only it's a bit black and white but it's a nice manual it has everything from um everything from your like law to each faction to actually how to play the game and it's really really cool that's nice nice little big old box but the real draw the real draw i i am not entirely sure games workshop even though this guy exists um i've never seen him mentioned or seen in any white dwarf to my knowledge um it's this guy so let's be careful here this is a uh, grumlock and gazbag this is a orc war boss that has a, a night goblin shaman sitting on his shoulder he's an absolute unit and again this is, this is never been opened um classic square base this guy is an official citadel model so you can actually use this at games workshop events and what a cool model to have in your army uh, I am considering putting this guy on a 32 millimeter base and then running him as a brute boss in my um, in my cruel boys and in my iron jaws uh, because he's such a cool model. And what cool set is base? A little piece of obscure history is that Games Workshop made an exclusive model that only got shipped in the Warhammer Online Age of Reckoning Super Collector's Edition. Um, and what a cool way to, to sort of like end off. That little, little, uh, that little box of swag. So I might do that. Uh, I might have to actually reach out to Warhammer World and ask if they'll accept it as a brute boss, and also accept it as a model, because again, I don't even think they know it exists. <laughs> it's very obscure. I've never heard anyone ever talk about it. Uh, there's plenty in in the wild. I've, you can find them on eBay. There's images on Google if you look it up and stuff. So they do exist. Um, but he's very cool. He is a model from his time. He's a chunky, stocky boy made of white metal. So he's really cool. And he might make an appearance in some future battle reports. I might scan him in, fully painted into the TTS to use as a... Oops. Uh, to use as a proxy for the brute boss. And that could be pretty damn cool. And now... And now, dear viewers, it is time for the finale of the video. This is the Ask Me Anything portion of the video. And I have the questions people have asked right here in front of me. So I'll spend most of this time looking down whilst I'm reading them, and then I'll be looking up whilst I reply to them. So the first question is by Adrian Um Kos I can't pronounce I am so sorry. Uh, Adrian Kosaka. He may ask, have you played every warband you made a video about? And if not, are you taking from others' experiences or personal opinion of how a warband might work? This is a really cool question. Um, when you've got well, I think almost 40 videos on your channel, and most of those videos are me talking about warbands, uh, asking if I've actually played those factions is a great one because am I a cunning devious liar who's stealing my opinions from everybody else no uh i have played every single faction i've done a video on um the amount the thing is the amount i've played of them does actually vary for example the vulcan flame seekers video i'd only played four games with before i made the video the gorgia more pack i think i played five and then other videos maybe 
more or less than that. It's difficult to um, make weekly content and get enough games in to really um, dive into a faction's like in our workings on a, a super competitive level. Um, so no, I don't play them all massively to an extent where I have complete mastery over things. And this is where mistakes do come in, uh, especially in the earlier videos when I was first starting. Uh, a few mistakes, uh, for example, in the Rotmire Creed video cropped up. But that being said, I make it a, uh, a goal to not really watch other people's content until I've made my content on the thing that their content is about. For example, I didn't watch off my amusings Vulcan Flame Seekers video until I'd already written my script for the Vulcan Flame Seekers. Um, I won't be watching anyone's video on the Wilder Core until I do a video on the Wilder Core. Um, but that doesn't mean I don't talk to people. The Warcry Discord is excellent. I talk to all kinds of players all the time um, from around the world about different things. So, for example, I have my opinions on the Monster Killers. And then uh, my my very my very good friend Robert Vascomi, uh, he also has opinions on those monster colors, and we'll talk about that. We'll 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 spitball spitball. We'll throw ideas against the wall, and we'll test them out. And for example, if I do take a list or an idea or a concept uh, from someone else, I always ask permission and then shout them out. For example, Mike Sansom, I used his list for the Spire Tyrants, and Robert Vascomi pointed me in the direction of the Auric Flamekeeper for the Vulcan Flame Seekers. So yeah, that's how that works. And I hope that answers your question, uh, kind of. And so the next question comes from Armour Enthusiast 7, um, or Mike Sansom from the Spire Tyrants video. Uh, an easy one is which war games, which war games are which breads for the toast? Okay, so this one's, this one's weird. Uh, so the war games aren't actually bread so the idea of war games on toast is that i am toast this is me my name is toast and people play war games on my semi-naked body and that is the concept of the whole channel so that has now been scarred into your brains for all eternity and you can now all successfully and understandably unsubscribe yes! this next one okay this one's from my my wife <laughs> my wife commented uh, so brioche the wonderful brioche mrs toast herself Will you play Warcry with anyone, subscribers, etc.? Yes, I will play Warcry with anybody. Anyone who's got models, people who don't have models, I have models. I will play Warcry with anyone who asks. Doesn't matter if you're new, if you're a pro, I will throw a dice and I will have a good time. And I'll try to make sure you have a good time too. I'll teach you to play the game. I will show you the ropes. I will get my ass handed to me. It's all a good time. Everybody is welcome to throw dice with toast. This is another question from Arm War Enthusiast. What other things can war games go on and why do they start on toast? Well, war games uh, can go on the semi naked body of a northeastern um, man if you really want to, but they can also go on a game board. I know, madness. Who would have thought? This question comes from my wife again. What's your favorite of the four new war bands and you can't say the dwarfs? That's not very nice. Um, this is actually a good question. So I went into the four new warbands thinking that I would absolutely fall in love with the uh, Cruel Boys monster killers. I'm a huge fan of Cruel Boys in general. They are my go-to faction. Um, they've overtaken Beasts of Chaos as the faction I truly love. And I was expecting monster killers to be right up there. They currently aren't. Uh, I like them a lot. I'm not as enamored with them as I thought I would be. And in the end, I actually really like the Gorge and Moor Pack. If I can't say dwarfs, dwarfs are actually my favorite, but if I can't say them, it is the Gorge and Moor Pack. And the reason for that is because the Gorge and Moor Pack adds something to the game that really isn't there. And that is um, a bespoke warband that is elite and good. So the only other elite warband that Games Workshop does in their bespoke line of Warcry warbands is the Questa Soul Sworn. And those guys are awful. Uh, they are not a good warband to run as a warband. Individually, they're pretty cool models and they can be allied in to anywhere. But as a complete warband, they're kind of terrible and they don't do anywhere near enough for their points, in my opinion. And I will have a video on that in the future. But the Gorge and Mopak have 
a lot of really cool things. They have a lot of speed, a lot of damage, a lot of power, but also very clear weaknesses. And they're not just run in and do damage. There actually is a lot of thought into how and when you go in because of how squishy your gorgeous are. And of course, then you throw in the clawback, and the clawback is one of the best allies in the whole game. And I think the clawback will be allied into so many destruction warbands in destruction soup because he has a durable, fast moving, hard hitting charge component to your lists that cannot be found anywhere else right now. And the next question comes from Ziggy Stardust. So he wanted to make sure that uh, do I feel that Warcry is the best tabletop war game? I, I haven't played them all. But from what I've played, I like Warcry far more than I've liked any other game in recent memory. Um, I prefer it to all of Games Workshop's other games. And yeah, I would say it's up there as, as one of, if not the best, uh, skirmish games going right now. And then he goes, if so, my question would be in two parts. What is it about Warcry and what would you change if you could? Well, that first part, what is it about Warcry that makes it the best miniatures game? It is the community. Um, it's a mixture of the community and the ease of play that makes it very very satisfying so the community for warcry is excellent uh, i found that it is mostly made up of um veteran war gamers who've played fantasy or 40k or age of sigma or other big games who've now become parents and just don't have the time to uh invest in painting and building and playing with giant armies across you know months and months of work and then hours upon hours of play and Warcry really allows us veteran wargamers uh, to play a very satisfying game that is very quick to build and paint and go with. And yeah, you can see this for all skirmish games. And this is where the second part comes in. And this is the ease of play. Warcry is so easy to teach. That's a huge blur. I fixed it. So Warcry is really easy to teach. Um, his rules are very straightforward. The most complicated rule in all of Warcry is actually starting a game. Uh, so for example, uh, the um, rolling for uh, who's going first or rolling for who's deploying first, who's attacker, who's defender. This often gets in the way of new players, and even veteran players, because it's just sort of like, you kind of just wing it. Um, there's definitely rules to do it and it's not that complicated, but it, it's sort of like one of those things that gets forgotten a lot. To the point where um, the recent one of the recent leagues actually had the instructions in the mission pack on how to start a game of Warcry. That goes on to the second question, which is what would I change if I could? It'd be that. It'd be making it a bit easier to set up and just get going because the game itself is very straightforward. Uh, and the setup, funnily enough, is probably the most complicated part. And now we have another comment from the wonderful Brioche, Mrs. Toast herself. Why haven't you done a video on your wife's favourite? The pretty elves with wings. Jesus Christ. Okay, right. So, <laughs> okay, there's a story of this. I bought a Christmas set that came with some winged elves and the uh, Sylvaneth Arch Revenant. That was that was a cool set. And the idea was, could I make this into a warband that works? And the answer to that question was no, because every model in that set is terrible apart from the Arch Revenant. Um, they are victims of having very high movement and range attacks. So um, they have awful stats and they are very expensive to run on the board. And yeah, the reason I haven't done a video on that is because they are un currently unplayable. I would love to see a, a time where they are made more playable. Maybe it reduced their movement. Games Workshop changes their points, out, their points like, formula. Maybe they make the range attack a bit better. I don't know. I would love to see them work, but currently I haven't done a video on the pretty winged Sylvaneth elves because the pretty winged Sylvaneth elves are dreadful. <laughs> <laughs> and the final question is actually the first question I ever got, and that was from two weeks ago. This is Alfie Stevens. Uh, so he's got a few questions, but sadly, uh, I can't open this comment. I don't know why. YouTube's been a bit weird. So I can only see some of the questions, but I'll answer the questions I can see. So do you prefer Heart of Gur or the first season of Warcry? I will say I prefer Heart of Gur. And the reason for that is I didn't play the first season of Warcry. <laughs> so I'm, as far as I'm aware, the rules haven't changed all that much. 
and so reactions were added um and from what i've heard from the players that the second edition of warcry is very very good so i would say from a personal perspective i prefer half good because that's the game i've played and i think from a more of a wide answer i think most people also prefer the heart of Gear season two of warcry because of the alterations and changes and additions that edition brought into the game uh the second question is what would you like to see in future seasons okay so i would like to see better terrain um the flesh trees for uh, heart of Gear are just they're done now it's been a while we've had a lot of flesh trees i'm kind of sick of seeing them i've got um all of the box sets for warcraft that came out i have way too much way too much fleshy trees and sure you have like variations oh this flesh tree has more fortification this flesh tree has more of a platform who cares it's too much there's too many fleshy trees and they're awful to play with uh the amount of times i've had people catch their sleeves or like the, the actual flesh on these flesh trees and then like launch like that tree across the freaking like, universe is more times than i can count so yeah the the seeing just different terrain would be enough uh better terrain uh something more varied a bit more cool uh what armies do you think should get i assume a bespoke warband i think that the elves should get bespoke warbands uh we have a lot of bespokes now uh and we are getting a lot of them in big bulks uh i would really like to see a good elf warband specifically the Ideneth Deepkin. Uh, these are probably the worst elves in the game from the compendium. They suffer from all kinds of just bad, bad vibes. Uh, they, they aren't very good. I would love to see them be good in a bespoke warband. And I think a bespoke warband is where Games Workshop could really iron them out and make them proper cool. I would love to see um, cavalry in them. I would love to see their, their fly, like, on their little dolphin things. I would love to see random sea creatures they have crabs and turtles and all that cool stuff being the core of their little pet mechanic that most warbands have now um have a super cool like wave like freaking a guy surfing on a freaking dead megalodon on a giant wave holding a giant harpoon something cool, cool stuff i know deepkin are one of the most creatively interesting factions that age of sigma has because they are semi undead vampire fish elves who ride turtles and seahorses and that's so cool and having that as a bespoke would make them cool that could that could make them usable and then that would be nice <laughs> And that is the end of the AMA and the end of this video. Thank you once again for supporting this channel. It means the absolute world. I hope to continue to make more content and provide whatever I can for this outstanding community. Until next time, lads, ladies, and everybody in between and beyond. I will see you in the next video. Ta-ra.